assumption that Steve and I are defending is that to best bring the Ukraine crisis, this geopolitical crisis to an end, it's important to first start by acknowledging Russia's interests. So what we're talking about here tonight is how best to end this crisis. We're not talking about who started it, who should be blamed. We're not talking about whether Vladimir Putin is a good guy or a bad guy. The question here is how best to end it. Now, this is referred to as a geopolitical crisis in the motion. My view is that it's much more than a geopolitical crisis. This is a geopolitical disaster. First of all, look at what's happening to Ukraine. This country is in the process of being destroyed. The war is only 78 days old. If this war goes on and on, you can only imagine what's going to happen to Ukraine. Estimates are by the World Bank that over $60 billion worth of damage has been inflicted on Ukraine. Some people say that it will take $600 billion to rebuild the country. Thousands of people have been killed. Cities have been destroyed. Five million people have left the country. Six million people are internally displaced. 13 million people are living in combat zones. For the sake of the Ukrainian people, it's essential to bring this to an end. Furthermore, we run the risk here that this war, which is now between Ukraine and Russia, is going to turn into a war between Ukraine and the United States. It's going to turn into a great power war. This is a really scary thought. We know very well that when wars become long wars, they tend to escalate. And the last thing we want is a war between the United States and Russia. And the reason is because the threat of nuclear war is on the table. Now, many of you might think this is not a serious possibility, but that would be a fundamental mistake. You should understand what America's goal is in this war. America's goal is to inflict a decisive defeat on Ukraine, number one, and number two, to bring the Russian economy to its knees with economic sanctions. If you listen to General Austin, who was the Secretary of Defense, he's basically talking about knocking Russia out of the ranks of the great powers. This is another way of saying we are presenting Russia with an existential threat. Now, does that mean that they will use nuclear weapons? Nobody can say for sure, but there is a serious possibility. Avril Haines, who's the director of national intelligence, said on Tuesday when appearing in Capitol Hill that one of the two scenarios in which Russia will use nuclear weapons is if it is being defeated in Ukraine. Well, our basic goal is to defeat Russia in Ukraine. So we have a very perverse paradox here. The paradox is that the better the United States does on the battlefield, with the Ukrainians doing the fighting, of course, the more likely it is that Russia will turn to nuclear weapons, and we might end up in a general thermonuclear war. We have to end this war to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, the motion says that we start by taking into account Russia's interest. This does not mean that we don't consider the interests of Ukraine, the interests of the United States, the interests of NATO. Of course, we take into account their interests. But we start with the Russians, and the reason we start with the Russians is very simple. They started the war. And what we have to do is figure out what their interests are, because if we don't know what their interests are, there's no way we can shut this one down. So we're starting with Russia's interests. Now, the question is, what are Russia's interests? The conventional wisdom, which I'm sure all of you have heard ad nauseum, is that Vladimir Putin is responsible for this war. Vladimir Putin is an imperialist. He's either trying to create a greater Russia or he's trying to recreate the Soviet Union. And what's going on here is that Ukraine is a country that he wants to conquer and incorporate into Russia. He wants to absorb it. There is absolutely no evidence to support that argument. There is no evidence that he thinks that's desirable. There's no evidence that he thinks that's feasible. And there's no evidence in the public record that he's ever said that that's what he intends to do. This is a crisis that is all about the West's efforts 
to turn Ukraine into a Western bulwark on Russia's border. It involves a three-pronged strategy, bringing Russia, bringing Ukraine into the EU, turning Ukraine into a pro-Western liberal democracy, and number three, and most importantly, bringing Ukraine into NATO. If you listen to Putin's speech, speeches and you read his writings, he has made it unequivocally clear that this is the principal problem, Ukraine joining NATO. And what has to be done here to solve this problem is Ukraine has to become a neutral country. Ukraine cannot become a Western bulwark on Russia's borders. You may not like that outcome, and I fully understand that. But if you are interested in preventing Ukraine from being completely destroyed, and you are interested in avoiding a nuclear war, you should be in favor of the motion. Thank you.